so we can do about anything. Mr. Prime Minister, thank you for being here. It's been my pleasure to welcome Prime Minister Suga to the White House. This is our first in-person meeting here, the first head of state that I've asked in my administration to, uh, to come to the White House. Yoshi, thank you for making the long trip to Washington. We've already met several times virtually on, at a G7 uh, meeting and a Quad Leaders Summit, but I greatly appreciate the chance to spend time with you in person and to make our exchange our ideas face-to-face. -face. There's no substitute for face-to-face -face discussions. We are still uh, talking, taking COVID precautions, being careful, but our commitment to meet in person uh, is indicative of the importance, the value we both place on this relationship between Japan and the United States, this partnership. We had a very productive discussion today. When nations as close as ours get together, we always look for operations and opportunities to do more. And today was no exception. So, Yoshi, you'll probably be seeing a lot more of me in the future. And today, Prime Minister Suga and I affirmed our ironclad support for U.S.-Japanese alliance and for our shared security. We committed to working together to take on the challenges from China and on issues like the East China Sea, the South China Sea, as well as North Korea, to ensure a future of a free and open Indo-Pacific. Japan and the United States are two strong democracies in the region, and we're committed. We're committed to defending and advancing our shared values, including human rights and the rule of law. We're going to work together to prove that democracies can still compete and win in the 21st century. We can deliver for our people and the face of a rapidly changing world. So today, we're announcing a new competitive and reliance partnership, CORE, between Japan and the United States that will enhance our ability, enhance our ability to meet the pressing challenges of our time, together meet those challenges. Top of our agenda is, of course, getting the pandemic under control and helping our friends and neighbors throughout the Indo-Pacific region to recover. Earlier this year, we, together with India and Australia, launched the landmark Quad Vaccine Partnership to expand the manufacturing of COVID-19 vaccines and assist countries throughout the region with vaccination efforts. And we agreed to enhance our support for global vaccination efforts through the ACT Accelerator and COVID facility. We're also going to do more beyond this pandemic to advance longer-term goals for health security reform of the World Health Organization, and establishing a new partnership, a new partnership on health security to build better preparedness for the next pandemic, because there will be others. Secondly, Japan and the United States are both deeply invested in innovation and looking to the future. That includes making sure we invest in and protect the technologies that will maintain and sharpen our competitive edge. And those technologies are governed by shared democratic norms that we both share, norms set by democracies, not by autocracies. So we're going to work together across a range of fields, from promoting secure and reliable 5G networks to increasing our cooperation on supply chains for critical sectors like semiconductors, to driving joint research in areas like AI, genomics, quantum computing, and much more. Thirdly, our nations are committed to taking aggressive action to meet the threats of climate change. <clears throat> Next week, I'll be hosting the Climate Leaders Summit, which Prime Minister Suga also plans to attend, thankfully, to rally key nations of the world to making ambitious climate commitments in the lead-up to Glasgow Summit later this year. Japan and the United States are both committed to achieving net zero emissions by 2050. And we know to do that will require setting and meeting our 2030 goals. And we'll work together to advance clean energy technologies and help nations throughout the Indo-Pacific region, especially developing countries, develop renewable energies 
and decarbonize their economies. And finally, both Prime Minister Suga and I value the incredible partnership that exists, not just between our governments, but between the Japanese people and the American people. Last month, we jointly marked the 10th year anniversary of the earthquake, tsunami, and nuclear disaster that cost so many lives in Japan. I visited the area shortly after it happened. In our private lunch, the Vice President, the, Pre the Prime Minister and I talked about when I was Vice President visiting the families in the region to show support of the United States. We continue to mourn the loss of all those folks and to honor the extraordinary joint effort between Japan and the American people in the wake of that tragedy to recover and to rebuild. And those personal bonds of friendship and, constant, and connection, they're the ones that are going to keep this alliance strong and vibrant for decades to come. And I'm especially proud that today we agreed to resume what we call, what is called the Mansfield Fellowship Program to promote people-to-people -people connections between our countries. Before Mike Mansfield, who was a beloved ambassador to Japan, became ambassador, he was a mentor of mine when I came to the Senate after my wife and daughter were killed. And he helped me along in ways I can't even explain in the United States Senate. And I'm proud, I'm proud that this legacy continues to be honored as part of the close, enduring partnership between our nations. And Yossi, I know how proud you are of the people of Japan are. And uh, you've got a Japanese boy coming over here, and guess what? He won the Masters. He won <laughs> the Masters. He won the green jacket. And Matsuyama was the first Japanese player to take home that green jacket at the Masters tournament this week. So let me say congratulations, Japan, as well, on that feat. Mr. Prime Minister, thank you for making the trip. I look forward to all that Japan and the United States will accomplish together in the coming years. It was a great honor having you as the first head of state in my